Good day everyone, I am Jubilee Ramos and today I am going to discuss the literature under American colonization from 1895 to 1945. But first, let us have our objectives. Our objectives for today are, first, analyze the influences and impact of foreign control on Philippine literature. Second, situate the text and its author in the appropriate literary, cultural, and social-historical context and be familiar with the author's biographical information and literary trajectory. Lastly, appreciate the Filipino culture, practices, and belief systems. America's involvement in the Philippines started with the bank. On the morning of May 1, 1898, an American flotilla commanded by Commodore George Dewey sailed into Manila Bay and without losing a single sailor, promptly sank a Spanish squadron that was anchored there. When the Spanish-American War ended in December 1898, Spain sold the entire Philippine archipelago to the United States for $20 million. The Philippines had acquired a new colonial ruler. The United States had acquired a colony the size of Arizona, located more than 4,000 miles away across the Pacific. With the coming of the Americans in our country, the shifting of literature is from Spanish to English. Even though the literature was in English, the preservation of the content for Filipino experiences was achieved. Education has become a very important issue for the United States colonial government since it allowed to spread their cultural values, particularly the English language, to the Filipino people. During the rule of the Americans, Philippine literature was influenced by two significant developments in education and culture. The first one is education. It is the introduction of free public education which became accessible to a greater number of Filipinos. Free public education made knowledge and information that gave us the chance to study. Those who will avail this education through college were able to improve their social status and join a good number of educated masses who became part of the country's middle class. The second one is culture. It is the introduction of the English language and was used as the medium of instruction. English as the medium of instruction introduced Filipinos to Anglo-American modes of thought, culture, and life ways. It does not only embed the literature produced, but also in the psyche of the country's educated class, which would be the wellspring of vibrant Philippine literature in English. When the Americans colonized our country, Filipinos could not escape being imitative of Americans' modes of writing, especially during the apprenticeship period. Since during this time, the shifting of literature is from, Sp from Spanish to English, it's like we're just adapting to the new language introduced to us. The period of apprenticeship is the imitation of the works of American writers. The produced works during that period religiously followed poetic structures without emphasizing creativity in the message to be conveyed. Philippine literature through anthologies, fictions, various literary genre, poetry. The first one is anthologies. It is defined as a book that has a large collection of writings in similar form, from a similar time, or about a similar subject manner, but by various authors. An anthology is a collection of poetry. So, under anthology is Filipino poetry by Rodolfo Dato by 1909 to 1924. Rodolfo Dato had the first collection of poetry in English, which is entitled as the Filipino Poetry. In this collection, 
collection, a poem was anthologized written by Juan F. Salazar in Philippine Free Press on May 9, 1909. So let's read the example by Juan F. Salazar in the Philippines Free Press on May 9, 1909. Vacation days at last are here, and we have time for fun so dear. All boys and girls do gladly cheer this welcome season of the year. In early June in school we'll meet, a harder task shall we complete. And if we fail, we must repeat that self-same task without retreat. We simply rest to come again to school where boys and girls obtain the Creator's gift to men whose sanguine hopes in us remain. Vacation means a time for play, for young and old in night and day. My wish for all is to be gay, and evil none lead you astray. So this poem attempts versification. So what is versification? Versification is a poem that generally has certain formal or structural features. But to be classified as a poem, it must only have poetic qualities such as meter, not usually always stanza and rhyme. So as you notice in this poem, if you count the syllables per line, it ha it all has um, eight syllables per line, like vacation days at last are here. And if you count the second line, it also has eight syllables and another thing is the rhyming words at the end of each line like here dear cheer year meet complete and so on the next one is the english german anthology of poets by pablo laszlo from 1924 to 1934 Another anthology edited by Pablo Laszlo was published and covered poets published from 1924 to 1934, among whom were Teofilo di Alcaoni, Aurelio Alvero, Horacio de la Costa, Amador T. Daggio, Salvador T. Lopez, Angela Manalang Toria, Trinidad da Rosa, Abelardo Subido, and Jose Garcia Villa, among others. And we have Carlos for America, Six Philippine Poets by Carlos Bulusan, 1942. So, a third pre-war collection of poetry was edited by Carlos Bulusan. The six poets in this collection were Jose Garcia Villa, Rafael Zulueta da Costa, Rodrigo T. Feria, C.B. Rigor, Cecilio Baroga, and Carlos Bulusan. And lastly, Dalawamputlimang Pinakamahusay na Maikling Kwento by Teodoro Agoncillo Anthology, 1945. And let's move on to fictions. In fiction, the period of um, apprenticeship in literary writing in English is marked by imitation of the style of storytelling and strict adherence to the craft of short story as practiced by popular American fictionists. So, the first one is Philippine Short Story by Leopoldo Yabes from 1925 to 1955. So, the Philippine short story in English of Yabes got points to the models of American fiction, exerting profound influence on the early writings of story writers like Francisco Arcelliana, A. E. Lityatko, and Paz Latorena. And Foundation of the UP Writers, 1926. Short stories in English of early Filipino fictionists are marked with American style. But this all changed when an elite group of writers in English began to exert influence among the culturati or the people who are interested in cultural and artistic matters. They have founded the UP Writers Club and had stated that one of its aims was to enhance and propagate the language of Shakespeare. So, I think we are all familiar with 
William Shakespeare. So, many people believe William Shakespeare is the best British writer of all time. His many works are about life, love, death, revenge, grief, jealousy, murder, magic, and misery. He wrote the blockbuster plays of his day. Some of his most uh, famous are Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and Hamlet. Some literatures. So the first one is Dead Stars by Paz Marquez Benitez. So it was a short story published and was made the landmark of the maturity of the Filipino writer in English. Soon after Benitez, short story writers began publishing stories no longer imitative of American models. The story writers like Icasiano Kalalang, A. E. Litiatko, Arturo Rotor, Lydia Villanueva, Paz La Torena, Manuel Arguilla, began publishing stories manifesting both skilled use of the language and a keen Filipino sensibility. The second one is Filipino Rebel by Maximo Calao and his native soil by Juan Naya. These two are the major novels of the period that discourses on cultural identity, nationhood, and being a Filipino done in the English language. The third one is How My Brother Leon Brought Home a Wife by Manuel Arguilla. It scanned the scenery as well as the folkways of Lucania. The fourth one is Children of the Ash Covered Loom by N.B.M. Gonzalez or Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez. It presented the panorama of Mindoro in all its customs, traditions, while configuring its characters in the human dilemma of nostalgia and poverty. And Literature and Society by Salvador Lopez, 1936. With the use of his essays, he provoked debates, the discussion centered on proletarian literature, that is, engaged or committed literature versus the art for art's sake literary orientation. But this discussion curious, curiously left out the issue of colonialism and colonial literature and the whole place of literary writing in English under a colonial setup that was the Philippines then. Also, with Salvador P. Lopez, the essay in English gained the upper hand in day-to-day -day discourse on politics and governance. Polynices, who used to write in Spanish like Claro M. Recto, slowly started using English in the discussion of current events even as newspaper dailies move away from Spanish reporting into English. Various Literary Genres in 20th Century So the first one is Sarzuela. So, Sarzuela is a form of Spanish or Spanish-derived musical theater in which the dramatic action is carried through an alternating combination of, of song and speech. So, Juan Abad, Aurelio Tolentino, Juan Matapang Cruz, Juan Crisostomo, Soto, mounted the classics like Tanikalang Ginto, Kahapon, Ngayon at Bukas, and Hindi Ako Patay. These sarzuelas were all directed against the American imperialists. Patricio Mariano's Anak ng Dagat and Severino Reyes' Walang Sugat are equally remarkable zarzuelas staged during the period. Next is One Act Play. So, a one act play is a play that has only one act, as distinct from plays that occur over several acts. One act plays may consist of one or more scenes. So, on the eve of World War II, Wilfredo Maria Guerrero gained dominance in theater through his one-act plays, which he toured through his mobile theater. His wanted a chaperone and the forsaken house became very popular in campuses throughout the archipelago. Then, we have novel. 
So, a novel is a narrative work of prose fiction that tells a story about specific human experiences over a considerable length. So, novel in Tagalog, Iloko, Hiligaynon, and Subwanon. This event developed during the period aided largely by the steady publication of weekly magazines like the Liwayway, Banawag, and Bisaya, which serialized the novels among the early Tagalog novelists of the 20th century were Ismael Amado, Valeriano Hernandez, Peña Faustino Aguilar, Lope K. Santos, and Laz Lazaro Francisco. So, other novels, we have Bulalakaw ng Pag-asa by Ismael Amado, one of the earliest novels that dealt with the theme of American imperialism in the Philippines. And next, we have Nena at Neneng by Valeriano Hernandez. So, it is the story of two women who happen to be best of friends as they cope with their relationships with the men in their lives. Nena succeeds in her married life while Nena suffers from a stormy marriage because of her jealous husband. And the third one is Pinaglahuan by Faustino Aguilar, a love triangle set in the early years of the century when the workers' movement was being formed. And we have Banaag at Sikat by Lope K. Santos, the hero of the novel falls in love with a rich woman, the daughter of a wealthy landlord. So, among the Iloko writers, we have Miningueno Ayati Kararwa by Hermegones Belen and Mena Bexon Pisologo. The novel is considered to be the Iloko version of a Noli Mitangere. So, Poetry Poetry in all languages continued to flourish in all regions of the country during the American period. So we have Balagtasan of Francisco F. Balagtas, who was hailed by Filipinos as the nation's foremost poet invented the Balagtasan in his honor. The Balagtasan is a debate in verse, a poetical competition done almost spontaneously between protagonists who debate over the pros and cons of an issue. The next one is Ako Ang Daigdig by Alejandro G. Abadilla, a modernist poetry armed with a new criticism that would taunt traditional Tagalog poet poetics. Through Abadilla's poetry, the rise of modernism in Tagalog poetry began. A departure from the traditional rhyme measure and orally recited poems recited poems um, modernist poetry utilized free or blank verses and was intended more for silent reading than oral delivery and lastly Akoy Isang Tinig by Genoveva Edroza Matute and Uhaw Ang Tigang na Lupa by Liwayway Arceo have been used as models of fine writing in by teachers of composition throughout the school system. And that's for the introduction of literature under U.S. colonization. Now, let's move on to the first literary piece under U.S. colonization that I am going to discuss. But before we proceed to our discussion, I want to ask you this question. What do you think are the things to be considered before getting married? Well, for me, aside from being financially stable, I think that we must make sure that we are ready and committed to it. That we are not just overwhelmed because of our feelings. Because marriage is a holy sacrament and there is no turning back once you made that decision. And before I finally reveal the title of the first literature to be discussed, anyone who can guess it based from the picture that is being presented in your screen? Well, that's right! 
the first literature under American colonization is footnote to youth. When we make decisions, it's either we take it or leave it, risk the opportunity or lose the chance, obey our parents or let ourselves decide. Footnote to youth depicts the typical life of Filipinos, especially those living in rural lands. A footnote is simply defined as a note at the foot of the page. It is often used to give additional information to the reader regarding certain words or phrases in the text. And yet, the author includes no actual footnotes in the story. As such, Jose Garcia Villa is obviously trying to put forth certain themes and messages regarding youth and life through the use of a short story. About the author the author of Footnote to Youth is none other than Jose Garcia Villa. He is a national artist for literature. He introduced the reverse consonant rhyme scheme, including the comma poems that made full use of the punctuation mark in an innovative poetic way. Reverse consonants is when the last sounded consonants of the last syllable are reversed for the corresponding rhyme, such as with near and run, and light and tell. And a new poetic use of the comma, when a comma is placed to separate almost all the words in a poem. For example, the, comma, caprice, comma, of, comma, cantaloupes, comma, is, comma, to, comma, B, comma, sweet, comma, or, comma, not, comma, sweet, comma. Villa's work have been collected into the following books. Footnote to Youth, Many Voices, Poems by Doveg Lion, and Have Come I'm Here, which brought him fame, honors, and fellowships. Villa received the American Academy of Arts and Letters Poetry Award, the Shelley Memorial Award, the Guggenheim, Bullingen, and Rockefeller Fellowships of, for Poetry. Disclaimer, the following photos used for this presentation are not the actual depiction of the story. It is used to creatively tell the story footnote to you. Summary It is all about a 17-year-old man named Dodong who can't wait to marry Taeyang. He was hesitant to tell it to his parents. But he asked permission to his father and then he allowed him. Then, they've got married and lived together. Taeyang gave birth to Blas. Blas was not Dodong's only child. More children came to them. Taeyang looks like shapeless and teen after all the responsibilities of a mother. She cried sometimes wishing she had not married. Sometimes, she thinks that what if she marry Lucio, who is until now childless. Then one night, the 18-year-old Blas also wants to marry Tona. Like what Dodong did when he was 17 was the one that Blas also did. Dodong allowed Blas to marry Tona but deep down inside, he felt sad and sorry. So for our plot structure, the first one is exposition. Dodong wants to marry Taeyang and ask his father's permission. Second, rising action. Thinking that they are still young and their love would be short, Dodong's father allowed them to be married. Third, climax. Dodong saw her wife in the papa with his firstborn child. He hears his baby's cry named Blas that pierced him queerly. He could not control the swelling happiness in him and also felt embarrassed because he is not 
still ready to support a family. Then Dodong wanted to touch the baby and give him a sense of father's touch. Fourth, falling action, Taeyang secretly regretted being married at an early age. She wondered if she would have the same life if she married Lu Xiao. Dodong finally realized the hardships of marrying such an early age. Then lastly, conclusion, Blast at age of 18 wanted to marry Tona. Dodong did not object but tried to make Blast think twice before rushing to marriage because Dodong doesn't want Blast to end up like him. Characters Our first character is Dodong. He is the main character of the story. He is young and confident. He feels independent enough to marry the love of his life at the young age of 17. He was described by the author as a boy who is growing into a man. An insolent and big although he was by nature law in status. He convinces his father for the same and gets married. However, seven years down the line and with seven children and a wary wife, he starts to question his impatience as a young man. When his own son wants to get married young, he advises him to not let hormones and young love dictate the rest of his life, which is hard. The second character in the story is Taeyang. She is the muse of Dodong and loves him immensely. The author described her as having a small brown face, small black eyes, and straight gloss hair that made her so desirable to Dodong's eye. She chooses him over another suitor, Lucio, who is a lot older than her. They both bear seven kids and feel that they made a mistake by marrying so young. When she hears about Lucio being childless even years after his wedding, she wonders what would have happened if she picked him instead of Dodong. However, in spite of her doubts, she is in love with her husband and committed to their family. And also, I want to clarify that it is the act of marrying at a young age that she regrets. Not the fact that it is Dodong whom she married. Our third character is Lucio. He is the suitor of Taeyang and wants to marry her. He is a lot older than her and a lot mature. But once she rejects him, he marries another girl but unable to have children. Then we have Blas. He is the firstborn of the married couple. When he turns 18, he also wants to marry Yang but is advised by his father to weigh all the pros and cons. However, he does not feel that he would repeat the mistakes of his parents. Next, we have Tana, Das girlfriend whom he wanted to marry. Lastly, father and mother of Dodong. Though the author described his father as a silent, hard-working farmer and his mother as a devoted and diligent mother, they are being pictured out as parents who cannot impose full authority to their son, Dodong. They could not stop Dodong from getting what he wanted even if his future was at stake. Now, let's move on to settings. The setting of the story is in a province farm. It is the time for planting season almost June to August. The story happened somewhere in the Philippines in one of its rural areas, particularly in a farmhouse. The carabao in the story signifies that it really happened in a farm. It was summer and probably the hottest time in the year because the dry land says it all. The author described the place in this way. The ground was broken up into many fresh wounds and fragrant with a sweatish earthy smell. It was also a place where modernization has not taken over yet. To prove the place has no electricity, the author pictured it out this way. It was dusk when he reached home. 
the petroleum lamp on the ceiling already was lighted. Conflict So the conflict in the story is man versus self. Character versus self conflict is also called as man versus self conflict. It is a type of conflict that takes place inside a character's mind. So the conflict in the stories are first, when Dodong wanted to marry Taeyang even if he was only 17 years old. Then, when Dodong felt guilty and untrue because unlike 9 months ago, he felt he was no longer a boy and he realizes that he was too young to become a father. Then, when Dodong wanted to be wise about many things and one of them was why life did not fulfill all of youth's dreams. Then the main conflict is the difficulty that the two young, young lovers face by marrying so early in life. Symbols By reading closely the story, we can spot symbolisms carefully crafted to metaphorically compare the setting of the story of the life of Dodong. So the first symbolism is the sun was salmon and hazy in the west. It was an implied comparison to Dodong being in love. It was patterned after the color of a salmon that is pinkish orange to light pink. Indeed, being in love gives a connotation that everything around that person glows. Everything is good and everything is beautiful. On the other hand, the word hazy means unclear gives a hint of the feeling of Dodong about his anxieties whether his father will allow him to marry or not to marry his girlfriend, Taya. The second one is a short colorless worm march blindly to Dodong's foot. The appearance of the worms and the occurrence of one worm crawling over Dodong's foot is of great importance to the story as it serves as a revealing of Dodong's character and future. The worm is described as blindly marching towards Dodong's foot, which is exactly how we could also describe Dodong and his choices in this story. Dodong blindly marched into marriage, expecting his life to become better. However, that is not what happened. Instead, after 9 months, Taeyang was pregnant, pregnant with his child and he felt incredibly unprepared. In a few moments, he would be a father. He was young, he realized now contradicting himself 9 months ago. Then, we have flashback. A flashback is a transition in a story to an earlier time that interrupts the normal chronological order of events. A flashback in a movie might show what happened when a character was younger. Flashbacks are often used for comedic effect to prove or contradict something in the present. So the flashback in the story are, first, in the cool sundown, Dodong thought wild young dreams of himself and Taeyang. Taeyang, his girl, she had a small brown face and black eyes and straight glossy hair. How desirable she was to him. She made him dream even during the day. The second one is Taeyang wondered about Lushong, her other suitor before whom she had not chosen because he is older than Dodong by 9 years. She wondered if she had married Lushong. Foreshadowing Foreshadowing is a literary device used to give an indication or hint of what is to come later in the story. Foreshadowing is useful for creating suspense, a feeling of unease, a sense of curiosity, or a mark that things may not be as they seem. So the foreshadowing in the story is this one. The sun was salmon and hazy in the west. Dodong thought to himself he would tell his father about Taeyang when he got home. After he had unhitched the carabao from the plow and led it to its shed and fed it, 
he was hesitant about saying it but he wanted his father to know. What he had to say was of serious importance as it would mark a climacteric in his life. This phrase gives a hint that there is something fishy going on with Dodong and Taeyang. It was really something serious because he is problematic over how he intends to talk to his father about Taeyang and going over the possible responses his father would give. What he might confess can break his father's heart. Then we have point of view. So the point of view used in the story is third person omniscient. The third person omniscient point of view is a method of storytelling in which the narrator knows the thoughts and feelings of all of the characters in the story. Through the use of the third-person omniscient viewpoint, a writer is able to bring to life an entire world of characters and give them significant depth and meaning. Using the third-person omniscient point of view, the narrator is able to relate information to the reader about each character that some of the characters in the story might not know about each other. So, a narrator narrates the story using he, she, and they pronouns. Theme So the theme in the story is being responsible, the concept of life. The reality is that when we are young, we often lack the maturity and patience to think deeply about our decisions. Such haze often ends up becoming regrets which we have to endure for the rest of our lives. Hence, the big lesson is to be patient and reflect on our choices before make lifelong or long-term decisions like marriage and etc. Being married at a young age must be considered because everything that's been happening in our society, we might just regret about it. Indeed, Marriage is a holy sacrament and must be taken seriously and confidently by two people sharing and seeking as their love grows. Conclusion So, for our conclusion, history repeats itself. The same thing happened again. Like his father before him, Dodong did not prevent his son from experiencing those hardships as well. Footnote to Youth, a cautionary tale and an allegory of a chapter of Philippine colonial history. From its title, Footnote, it is a brief reminder for the Filipinos, especially the youth, of what a real life could be today. In the story, Dodong married Dayang at the age of 17 because he thinks that he is already a grown-up man and he can handle things. They think that their love for each other is enough to work out things and they did not think that their quick decision caused both of them to suffer because of their lack of knowledge and experience. They are not matured enough. The author wants to open our minds that we don't need to rush things, just enjoy and cherish every moment and everything will be placed in its proper order. For the continuation of my discussion about the literature under American colonization, you may watch my second video presentation. See you there!